Hi folks and welcome to another video of Mackenzie Photo. This is probably attempt number 562 of trying to make this because of phone calls and other interruptions. Anyway, what I want to talk to you today is probably obvious from the video title. I want to talk about the GFX 50S2. Now, from the perspective of being a GFX 100S owner, um, it's quite an interesting proposition. Um, obviously, it's the exact same body, exact same shape, it's just a few different internals and a few different specs. Uh, the GFX 50S2 um, is quite a mouthful to say, but um, would it be good as a backup to my 100S? And the answer probably would be yes. It is still an amazing camera. I mean, if we look at the specs on it, I've got some notes on it here. I'll just find the right page with the specs. Yeah. Never the first one you're actually looking for. So, let's have a look at the specs. Maximum resolution is 51 megapixels. So that's 8256 by 6. 192 pixels. Um, effective, mix to, effective megapixels is 51. Um, the sensor size is 44 mil by 33 mil. It's the X4 pre processor um, and it's a CMOS sensor rather than a backlit sensor like in, like in this one. Um, ISO range goes from 50 to 100 Oh, sorry, 102400, um, which is a crazy amount that an ISO can go to. I remember the film days of 3200 being the max and you could push it to 6400 and that was it. Um, you can, it's the same with the 100S, you can customize all the dials, um, you can set it up the way you want. The, the major difference that I'm seeing, apart from obviously the megapixel count, um, is the video and I'm going to get onto that in a bit but I want to talk about the image stabilization somehow they've managed to put it up a stop to 6.5 stops of stabilization in body now when you combine that with the Fuji GF lenses 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 then that will obviously increase to what the lens can do as well some you could have 8 stops of stabilization which is just insane to me um, I mean you, this is a heavy camera when you've got the 45 to 100 that's why I use my standard lens on it so you do need the stabilization if you're shooting below a 60th of a second which sometimes you do um, because I like to keep my ISO my, I'm one of these people that likes to keep the ISO as low as you possibly can my favorite ISO is either 50 or 100 um, because of the quality that it gives you from there and the tonal range. Um, I know people think that's crazy. You should be able to shoot way up at 400, 800, 1600, no problem. And you can, it's just personal preference for myself. So, I mean, with the 50, 50 S2, um, you're going to have just as much fun as I do with this camera, except you won't be able to blow things up to the size I can without any sort of failure. Um, now, when I print from this, the raw file I think is about 40 by 30 inches. It's not, ex I'm not quoting exact ones because I don't have them in front of me, but that is a massive, massive print. Now I've got uh, old Epson 9800 in my living room, which I use to print those size of images because um, I'm kind of a, a numpty, shall we say, that has an industrial printer in the living room to print images that way. Um, for me, sending images to get printed that size wasn't cost effective. So I end up finding an old printer online and reading lots of forums. Um, learning, a, well, learning a lot about the inner workings of a printer, which um, if you're not 
too invested in trying to save yourself money, don't bother. Um, it, it was an absolute nightmare to get us up. I got it running, I'm very happy with it. Um, mainly because I love printing large images. I still could print um, large images of my Canon 6D Mark II. Um, I could print um, a 60x40, no problem. But the resolution came down, whereas with this, I can print at that super high resolution. And you will be able to do that with the GFX 50 S2. It's a fantastic sensor. Yes, a lot of people are saying it's an old sensor, but it's still an amazing sensor. It's been best in class for the number of years that it's been around. It was used in Hasselblad, it was used in Fuji. Um, I'm not sure if it was used in phase one, but I know it was used in a couple of the Hasselblad HD6 50 and the Hasselblad handheld version, I can't remember the name of it right now. Um, it was used across the board in those cameras and it's a fantastic piece of kit. Anyway, I'm rambling on um, and I'm going off on a tangent. Where was I? I think I was on image stabilization. So, uh, in, the, in the sensor, obviously. Um, now, do I want to go into more information? Probably not. I mean, I could go on about the pixel shift goes to a 200 megapixel image but with the pixel shift i found with the fuji 100s it's not tack sharp when you do it so i tend to stay away from it i've got a 100 megapixel image from that size of sensor i don't really need to do much and um, to blow that up um so i've heard mixed results with it i mean the price point let's talk about the price point actually the price point of the Fuji GFX 52 is somewhere on all these bits of paper that I just can't seem to find. Anyway, found it. So the price point it's coming in at is $3,999 for a digital medium format camera. That's insane. I mean, when a GFX 50s came out i'm not sure exactly what the price was i know what the uk price was it was just under five thousand pounds which was phenomenal and in the uk i think the price of the body is just is coming in around three thousand eight hundred pounds which is an insane amount of money for a medium format camera um, now this camera was five thousand pounds or i think five and a half thousand pounds when it came out again phenomenal price for what you're getting when you compare it to, and I know a lot of people say you shouldn't compare it to the Hasselblads and Phase 1s, but it is a digital, digital medium format and it, do, it can output similar, if not just as good images as the Hasselblad or the Phase 1, but it's a lot more mobile and it's in a smaller package. The body alone just weighs 900 grams and it'll be the same in the GFX 50S2. So bang for your buck, you can't beat it. Quality, you can't beat it at that price. Um, it's not a sports or wildlife camera. The lenses they've got, I don't think support that. I mean, the longest lens for the GFX system is I think the 250. Um, now in a medium format, that brings the actual representative focal length down. So I think it'd probably be, I think just under 200 on full frame standards. But I mean, if you're shooting sports or wildlife, you're generally looking at getting a longer lens than that. Um, the lenses that they've got are absolutely amazing. They suit portraiture and commercial fantastically and landscape. Um, I would like to see a little bit more wide angle lenses come out for the GFX system. Um, at the moment, I've just got a 45 prime, which is f2.8, and I've got the 45 to 100 f4, which I use as my standard lens. Um, and that allows me to cover all the stuff that I usually do. My main focus is portraiture, which I'm going to start doing more of on the channel. Um, and the next lens I'm looking to get is the 120 macro. I had a loan of that this weekend from Fuji. It's fantastic. The quality is amazing and I really want to get that because you can do some amazing portraits with that again and get close up. Um, I'll also be borrowing the 80mm 
1.7 this weekend from Fuji, which I'm really looking forward to. I've got a shoot lined up and I really hope everything goes according to plan and COVID doesn't interfere so I can get out and test that lens. Um, I am went off on yet another tangent. Um, for me, get, getting the Fuji GFX 50 S2, it's not a realistic thing just now. For the people that are still kind of waiting to get into the medium format system, if, if you can afford to get in digital medium format and it's, it will slow you down, you won't be as fast, it's not as fast as Canons and Nikons by any stretch of the imagination, um, but if you're after quality, real difference in quality from full frame, a lot of people say there isn't, but there is, trust me on this, when you print the size I print, even when you print on A4, you can see the tonal difference if you get it printed right you can see that tonal difference from the sensor. If you're looking in to get to, into this quality world, the GFX 50S2 is a fantastic piece of kit. If that's what you can afford, go and get it. And get yourself, probably get the 63 mil standard prime. Don't, don't get the the little zoom that's coming out. I know it's fantastic, I've seen the results from it, but treat it like going back to what you'll start wearing in film. Start working with a prime. Uh, if you need to get a wider angle, move back. If you need to get closer up, move forward. Start yourself with a prime. Um, and the 63mm, which is their standard size, will be a perfect lot of lens to attach to your camera. Um, if you can't afford to move up to the 100S, do it. I don't know what the waiting times are going to be like. I don't know if there's still waiting times on the 100S and I don't know what the wait times will be like on the GFX 50S2. I know when they will release it, but I know it'll be in small numbers. So people that will pre-order it will have to wait because I had to wait a long time to get the GFX 100S. Um, I had to wait a couple of months actually. Um, and again, with the worldwide shortage, that's only going to continue to get harder to get items. Fortunately, it doesn't look like it's pushing Fuji's prices up. I'm not going to say that that won't change in the future. There is a silicon shortage. Demand makes prices go up. And these cameras at the moment are in demand. They are opening what was previously a locked out because of financial issues part of photography that everyone wanted to move up to. When I was working in film, the dream was to move into medium format. I've tried large format, large format isn't for me. It's too much of playing about um, and it's too slow. Medium format slows you down again, but it doesn't slow you down to a snail's pace. Whereas I find that with large format, medium format is the format that I prefer to use. And the GFX 50S, is an amazing piece of kit. If that's what you want to get, go out and get it. The 100S, if you can afford to wait and move up to get the 100S, do that. The main reason I say that is the video part. Now, the 50S2 has come out with some really substandard video recording capabilities in 2021. They should have made it 4K, and maybe they should have just cropped it down. Um, sorry, my phone was going off there. Maybe they just should have cropped it down, but they should have made it 4K, even recording at 30. Um, but the video recording that the one that the 50S2 can do is, in this day and age, to me, pointless. You need 4K as standard in cameras that you're bringing out now. Anyway, that's enough of me rambling on. Um, if I didn't have the 100S, and I had the money to spend, what would I do? Would I save up and get the 100 days, or would I just go out and straight get the 50 S2? Knowing me, I probably would go and get the 50 S2 straight away. Being a GFX 100 S owner now, I'd wait, save up, get the GFX 100 S. But that's just my opinion. The 50S2 is still an amazing bit of kit. It is absolutely fantastic. People that have got the 50S and the 50S, uh, the 50R, 
all rave about it and that all comes down to that sensor and that sensor's still there it'll still give you those results it is an amazing piece of kit anyway i'm going to shut up um, in a minute but what i'm going to say is what i do say all uh, pretty much most of all my videos um, is please like comment and subscribe or dislike comment and subscribe but that's not it um, what i usually say is um, for anyone worried about cancer I have cancer myself what I would suggest to you is if you're worried about it go to your doctor and check yourself regularly boys and girls you know what to do you know which parts to feel feel those if there's anything that comes up go and get it checked out if you're unsure of anything or anything feel strange go to your doctor get your doctor to do some tests make sure you don't have this because it is a horrible crippling disease um, and this is my second time around with it it has changed my life completely um, and i would never wish anyone to have it so if you get the chance if you have the chance don't wait go to the doctor now don't wait till tomorrow don't put it off till next week go to the doctor as soon as you can and get yourself checked out and make sure you are clear now with saying that um if you would like to support me through my journey through cancer, you can do by going to my website, www.mckenziephoto.com. Um, and on there, you can see my work. You'll also see a, a shop on there, which has my print sale. It also has some apparel, which is fuck cancer. There's also the censored version of fuck cancer. Um, there's t-shirts, there's hoodies. And if you do want to support me, there is donations on there or you can buy something for yourself. If you buy something for yourself, I'll give you a discount code and it works across the store. It's 10% off and that discount code is McKenzie 410 And that's pretty much it for today's video. I just want to say thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe or dislike and subscribe. And um, hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye bye.